Hey guys, Jacob Dupre here. Today I'm going to show you how to auto-tune vocals. Auto-tune. Yeah, that's... Maybe I'll do it like... Auto-tune. Okay, we're going to be doing it with Auto-Tune Pro from Antares. It's a really awesome plugin. Excited to show it to you. Let's go. So first, we have a project here, right? I'm in Ableton. I've got a song I've been working on. Let me just play you a little bit of it so you just get a feeling of the context of this song that I'm working on. You can find me in a book Jumping over rivers like a full of a took Close your eyes and disappear Purple skies and dragonflies will take me away Okay, so that's the song with just the backtracks with the other instruments and the vocal with no processing on it. Let's go ahead and add that plugin and start auto tuning. When you first open the plugin like this, the default mode is called auto mode. And what auto will do is basically just allow you to do a very simple pitch correction application to your vocal. So you just get some simple tools that you'll find in just about every auto tune plugin. Retune speed, which is perhaps the most important thing, which controls how fast the auto-tune plugin starts pitch correcting. You have flex tune, which allows you to add more pitch deviation for expressive purposes. You have humanize, which adds realism to your sustained notes, especially when you're using higher retune speeds. And then you have natural vibrato, which minimizes or accentuates vibrato that's present in your voice, in the audio input that's going in. So let's just play back the vocal. We'll solo it and then play it back just with this auto mode engaged. So there's nothing else that I've done. I haven't tweaked anything. This is just putting the plugin in the channel and playing it back. Let's just listen to it. You can find me in a book Jumping over rivers like a full of a took So vocals are expressive, right? Vocalists don't sing like a piano where every note is exactly defined and perfect, one of the 12 chromatic pitches. There's inflections, there's movement between notes, and, you know, just you can't sing perfectly in tune. So when you're auto-tuning something, in this default mode, we're on chromatic right now. So all the auto-tune plugin is doing is trying to snap every note to the closest chromatic pitch, one of the 12 chromatic pitches. So that's going to, you know, usually make a result you don't want. It's going to sound kind of strange because you're going to hear a note that maybe snaps to a pitch you don't want it to. Um, so how do you fix that? In auto mode, your best tool for that is the scale or key mode, right? So I already know this song is in B major, so I'm going to change it to B, and I'm going to change the scale to major. Now when I play it back, it's going to snap every single note I sing to the closest note in the B major scale, in the key of B major. So let's hear how that sounds. You can find me in a book. Hear how much clearer it is already. You don't hear some of the notes I'm singing trying to snap to the wrong note or that kind of fluttering thing that happens in there. It's, it's much clearer and better. Now that we have the key set correctly, we can use the retune speed to really change the sound of the vocal. Um, so again, retune speed is affecting how quickly auto-tune starts changing the pitch, correcting the pitch. In this case, snapping it to our scale setting, our key setting. If you have it slow, so that would be all the way to 400 over here to the left, you're probably not even going to really hear that much of pitch correction because it's taking so long for it to engage, right? You can find me in a book. Now, if I go to the opposite extreme, you'll really hear it, and actually you'll start to hear a little bit of that kind of T-Pain sound. A lot of people we use, also Daft Punk does it, which is that overly auto-tuned sound that you hear in a lot of pop music where it's very clear, you know, it almost sounds like it makes the vocal almost start to sound like a synthesizer, like an instrument, because the, the pitch and the notes are so pure and so perfect. It sounds kind of unnatural, but it's a sound, and it's a sound you hear in a lot of music. So let's put it all the way to the right, to zero. So this is the fastest retune speed you can get. You can find me in a book. And then when you're producing the song, you just have to use your own ears and decide what sound you want, what sound works best for the song you're producing. Another really important setting that's next to the key and scale settings over here is input type. 
And that's a really important one because that will help auto-tune, help the plugin function better. Um, basically, you just pick the vocal range of whatever the singer was that recorded this vocal part. So for me, I know I'm a low male, right, or a tenor, um, but, but low male is probably the best setting. It makes the plugin listen for that range. It's going to detect that my vocal range better. The other thing to check out is the formant settings, and you want to use that whenever you're using transpose, if you're transposing the vocal. Um, now, when you do transpose, the voice resonant frequencies are going to shift around, right? Because you're transposing it either up or down, away from the natural range, the natural pitch of that voice. Now, you want to adjust the formant settings so you can prevent this from happening. It'll make it sound a little bit more natural. Um, so just to show you how that sounds, if I turn formant on, and I transpose up, say, higher than my voice. So I go up by six semitones and then play this back. Let me solo the vocal. You can find me in a book. So it doesn't sound like me at all, right? It's, it doesn't even sound like a guy really anymore. Um, now, if I change the throat length as well, you can hear how that's going to change the quality of the voice, the sort of perceived range of the voice. You can find me. In a book, jumping over the fish like a full of a tuck. So that gives the vocal a little bit more of a deeper sound again. And if I go all the way to the left, it's a lot more higher and kind of airy sounding. The other thing to look at is tracking control, which adjusts the input sensitivity. So the neutral value is 50. That's the default. But greater than 50 will relax the tracking. Less than 50 focuses your tracking. The important thing to remember with auto mode, which is what we've been talking about, is there's really not many features you need to worry about, right? Especially if you're just new and you just want to add some simple pitch correction to snap to a specific key of the song, the key of the song. Um, of course, you can use Humanize here. Uh, you can change your vibrato, uh, flex tune. There's some other things you can use, but really retune speed is the main thing that affects the sound of your vocal and the response of the plugin. I don't want to dive into it too much, but there is an advanced mode you can go into when you're in auto like this. Um, you can see it gives you some more options. You can do things to fine tune the vibrato of your vocal more with these settings here. Um, and there's some more uh, options here for the scale, for the key that you have, that kind of thing. So that was a basic overview of auto mode, but now let's go on to the more complex mode, which is called graph mode that allows you to tweak your pitch correction even more, really just above simple auto tuning. So we'll go ahead and switch to graph. And now that opens this large interface where you can input your audio and then do even more to it. So we have to start by getting some audio into graph mode. And you do that by going over here to track. So basically what we're going to do is play back the vocal and track it into the plugin. So we already have the vocal soloed. We know we want to record the whole thing, so I'm just going to play it from the beginning of the project and let Autotune Pro track the whole thing. You can either do pitch, so it will track just the pitch, or you can do pitch and time information. I'm going to go ahead and do pitch and time. And now I'm going to play back the project and you'll see it go into the plugin. You can find me in a book Jumping over rivers like a fool of a took Close your eyes and disappear Purple skies and dragonflies will take me away You. So now it's in there, right? There's a couple things at the end of there. Sounds like maybe I like got away from the mic or something. But you know what? It's good enough for us to talk about auto-tune. So there it is, right? It's in there. Now the first thing to pay attention to, we'll zoom in, is these red lines, right? That is the original performance. So that's the pitch information that was tracked from the original unaltered vocal, right? But now what we want to do is use some of the tools in here to edit the vocal, to actually change that original vocal and tailor the pitch to our liking. Uh, one of the easiest ways to do that is to go to make notes. So what the plugin is going to do is listen to the vocal. It's going to try analyzing it and figure out what notes I'm singing, and it's going to put it there in the interface in this graph so that we can see it. Um, you can either make notes, so it's just going to listen to it and do it itself, or you can take it from MIDI. But we're going to go ahead and make notes, just that normal one, and now you're going to see bars show up that are representing the pitches that I sang, right? So now let's listen to it again. 
You can find me in a book. So there it is. And you can actually click on each bar and hear the pitch that I sang. So that's cool, right? Whenever you're editing the pitch, you can always click on one of those notes and hear where you're at, right? So if you move one of these around, either up or down, it always gives you that feedback so you can hear what you're changing. So now that we have the notes tracked, we can start changing it around and tweaking it, right? So you can do things like use cut here, and let me zoom in a little bit, and I can cut this here. And then I can drag these notes around. And if I wanted to, I could come in here and add another note. So if for some reason I wanted to change just the middle part of this particular note, I could do that. So let's play it back. You can find me. <laughs> right, so that sounds crazy, but I can do that if I want to. Of course, I can undo if I want to go back, get back to the original uh, analyzed notes. Um, now the other tools you can do you can make a curve like this. So if I come in, I can actually draw in the pitches that I want. So I can actually draw along the notes and now you'll see that that replaces those notes. You can find me. See, I didn't draw them exactly where I wanted them, but if I wanted to do this right here, <laughs> some crazy shape, you can find me. <laughs> right? So obviously that sounds unnatural and, and kind of strange, but you can see how much control you get. You can literally draw any shape you want, and it will change the pitch to that. You can find me. <laughs> so obviously in this case, we want a pretty natural vocal. I just really want to fine tune my pitch um, and make it sound natural. Um, so if I go into retune speed, of course, that's another thing that's here, just like from auto mode. You can find me in a book, jumping over. So other than placing notes with this tool here, where you can drag notes in like that, or you can draw curves, you can draw pitch curves like that, you can also draw lines. And really, lines and curves, these two tools, they're really the same, except you don't get any curves with the lines, right? So it's more boxy like this. So. You can place a node. Every time you click, it places a node, and then you can drag it to a different place. So if I wanted to, I could actually change the pitch this way. So now I'm just tra I'm tracking along the same pitches as the analyzed notes, because that's what I want. You can find me. So see, it basically sounds the same. But if I wanted there to be really uh, stark changes in pitch, um, like if I wanted it to snap down here, and then I wanted to do this and stare, step it down to whatever this is going to sound crazy, but you'll get the point. You can find me. <laughs> right? That's pretty cool. All right, so now we've changed the vocal performance, right? We've edited the pitch. We've added some correction and changed things. But let me show you what we're actually looking at here. We talked about the red line, right? This red line here is showing you the original performance. So that was before we did anything to it. You can't change that line. That line won't change. It will basically always be your guide, your reference to show you where, you're, where you started. The green line, though, is the altered pitch. That's what's coming out. That's what you're seeing, that's the visual representation of what's the final product after editing. The blue lines are, anything that's blue is your correction object. So that's like if you draw lines like this, see those are colored blue. Or if you do a curve, if I do this curve, see that's blue. But because that's the resulting pitch, now the green line has changed as well. So just to review, the red line in the graph represents the original pitch, the original performance, the unaltered performance. The blue line is your correction objects that you draw in, and the green is the resulting sound, the final sound. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, if you have any questions or you'd like to maybe see a deeper dive into Auto-Tune, please comment those below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like these or go to Sweetwater.com for all your music instrument pro audio needs.